Hi! In this latest edition in my Facts About series, I'm moving on to the fourth Tudor monarch, Queen Jane, who's more commonly known as Lady Jane Grey. So here are 18 interesting facts about this young queen. Number one, Lady Jane Grey was the daughter of Francis Brandon and Henry Grey, Marquis of Dorset, later Duke of Suffolk. She was the granddaughter of Mary Tudor, Queen of France and Charles Brandon, Duke of Suffolk, and the great-granddaughter of King Henry VII. She was also the great-niece of Henry VIII and first cousin once removed of Edward VI, Mary I and Elizabeth I. Number two, she was born in 1537 probably at Bradgate Park in Leicestershire. Number three, following Henry VIII's death and the accession of Edward VI, Jane became a ward of Thomas Seymour and so became part of the Dowager Queen Catherine Parr's household after Seymour married Catherine. Elizabeth, the future Elizabeth I, was also part of this household. Seymour had told Jane's parents that he could arrange a marriage between Jane and Edward VI. Number four, Jane received an excellent education and was an intelligent and studious girl. Her main tutor was John Aylmer, but she also met the top scholars of the day during her time living with Thomas Seymour and Catherine Parr. She also met famous reformists and humanists. She loved Greek and was a linguist with a knowledge of Latin and Hebrew, on top of the usual modern languages. Number five, Jane was chief mourner at Catherine Parr's funeral at Sudley in 1548. Number six, Jane married Guilford Dudley, son of John Dudley, the Duke of Northumberland, and Edward VI, chief advisor. It was a triple marriage. Jane's sister married Lord Herbert, and Guilford's sister Catherine married Lord Hastings. Number seven, although it is often said that the Duke of Northumberland came up with the marriage idea to make his son king, Roger Alford, in a letter to William Sissel, claimed that Elizabeth Brooke, Marchioness of Northampton and wife of William Parr, came up with the idea. Number eight. In July 1553, when he knew he was dying and realised that his cousin Francis would not have any sons before he died, King Edward VI named Lady Jane Grey as his heir. He died on the 6th of July 1553 and Jane was proclaimed queen on the 10th of July. When Jane was proclaimed queen at Cheapside, a boy declared that Mary was the rightful queen. He was punished by having his ears cut off. Number nine. Although Jane had not sought the throne for herself, when she was informed that she was queen and that she'd been chosen by Edward VI, she saw it as God's will, her destiny, and did all she could to hang on to it. Number 10. Although she's often known as the nine-day queen, her reign was actually 13 days, from Edward VI's death on the 6th of July 1553 to Mary I being proclaimed queen on the 19th of July 1553. Number 11. After Mary took the throne, Jane was imprisoned at the Tower of London. Rooms in the house of gentleman jailer Nathaniel Partridge served as her prison and she was attended by three ladies and a manservant. Number 12. It looked like Jane would receive a pardon, but she was very vocal in her opposition to Mary's religious policies. Number 13. Jane spent her imprisonment studying the Bible and writing letters and prayers. In one of her letters, she damned all those who attended Catholic communion, and in a letter to her former tutor, Dr Thomas Harding, a man who'd turned away from Protestantism and embraced the Catholic faith, she called him the deformed imp of the devil and called the Catholic faith the whore of Babylon. She also wrote of how Christ came not to bring peace but a sword and that people should return again unto Christ's war. Number 14. Jane was tried for treason with her husband Guilford Dudley, his brothers Ambrose and Henry and Archbishop Thomas Cramner on the 13th of November 1553. They were all found guilty and condemned to death. Number 15. Mary I didn't rush to execute her, and even though Jane had been condemned to death, Mary made it clear that she wanted to be merciful. However, 
In early 1554, Jane's father was involved in Wyatt's rebellion, which sought to depose Mary and replace her with Elizabeth. Jane's execution was scheduled, but a three-day reprieve was granted to give time for Mary's chaplain and confessor, Benedictine John Fecknam, to convert Jane to Catholicism and to at least save her soul. It didn't work. Jane courageously kept her faith. Number 16. One of Jane's final letters was to her sister, Catherine, encouraging her not to take the easy way out and convert to Catholicism, for that would damn her, and encouraging her to put her trust in God and to rejoice in Jane's death as she did, for she would have eternal life. Number 17. Jane and Guildford were executed on the 12th of February 1554 by beheading. Guildford on Tower Hill and Jane within the Tower confines. Number 18, the final fact. In the Beecham Tower at the Tower of London, among the carvings in the stone, is the word Jane. The Dudley brothers were imprisoned there, so perhaps Guildford was responsible for it. I'm always moved when I see it. Thank you for joining me. I hope I've surprised you with a few of these facts about Lady Jane Grey, or Queen Jane as I prefer to call her. You can subscribe to this channel by clicking around about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live. And please do give me a like and leave me a comment if you wish. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.